Welcome to another video in my series on complex numbers. Now today we're going to talk about split quaternions and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going from complex numbers to split quaternions to quaternions. But before we do that, I just want to do a quick review on complex numbers in the 2x2 two two matrix form. This is what a plus bi, the algebraic form of complex numbers, this is how they look in the 2x2 two two matrix format. Here you have a on the forward diagonal, which corresponds to the real component, and you have b on the backward diagonal, which corresponds to the imaginary component of the complex number. Now a, the forward diagonal, has the same sense so if A is positive, then this is also positive, or if A is negative, this is also negative. And then uh, the backward diagonal has uh, opposite sense, so if this is a positive number, this is a negative number, and if this is a negative number, this is a positive number. This, of course, is Euler's formula in the 2x2 two two matrix format. Um, as you can see, the cosines are on the forward diagonal and correspond to the real component of Euler's formula. And the sines are on the backward diagonal and they correspond to the imaginary component of Euler's formula. And of course, this little symbol here means theta and theta is an angle. So you would plug an angle into um, theta in this 2x2 two two matrix. When you multiply this matrix with a scalar, then this matrix becomes a full-blown transformation matrix. And so when you multiply a matrix by a scalar, and this is like A cos theta, A sine theta, A cos theta, uh, minus A sine theta. So this becomes a transformation matrix. Using this transformation matrix, you can multiply, you can transform any point in a plane to another point in the plane, and you would be using this formula to do that. So this is a transformation matrix. This will transform a point from one location in a, let's say, in a Cartesian uh, coordinate to another place in the Cartesian plane, only this is in uh, polar coordinates. So if we set A equal to 1, then uh, we can go back to, we can ignore the 1, and we can do an example where we set the angle, where we set the theta equal to 90. And what this will do is it will take a point and it will transform it um, it'll, uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise in the convention that I'm using. So this is a transformation matrix and it is um, generally used for transforming points about the origin in a Cartesian coordinate system. And so you would be transforming a point, an XY location in a Cartesian coordinate through this transformation and you would end up with another point. And of course, the cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero, and the sine of 90 degrees is equal to one. And so um, this matrix here is in fact this matrix here in disguise. And this matrix here in two by two matrix uh, formalism is equal to I which is the identity of the imaginary numbers. And of course, we all know I corresponds to a 90 degree rotation. It is a counterclockwise 90 degree rotation in the convention that I'm using. So I corresponds to a counterclockwise uh, 90 degree rotation. And uh, this is the um, actual matrix that does that job. And this is the, um, when you solve for the cosines and the sines, you end up with this matrix here. So this matrix here, this is why this matrix here is equal to I. In fact, this matrix here is equal to I, and the cosine of 90 is 0. 
and the sine of 90 is 1, and so you end up with this matrix here. So this matrix here corresponds to I in 2 by 2 matrix format. Similarly, if you set the degrees in this um, 2 by 2 matrix to 0, you get the cos of 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. And so you end up with this matrix right here. So the cosine of 0 is 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. And so this is the matrix that, um, that I call 1. This is the 1 matrix. And actually, let's just do this for consistency. I put square brackets around matrix. So the 1 matrix is equal to this matrix right here. And that is because the cosine of 0 is 1 and the sine of 0 is 0. And so this matrix here is, the, is exactly this matrix here. And uh, it corresponds to the uh, two-dimensional numerical value of 1. And this is where split quaternions come in. If you go to Wikipedia and you type in split quaternion, you're going to see this on that page. And so here you can see, here is my uh, one, my matrix that corresponds to the two-dimensional um, version of one, which is really the cos of zero and the sine of zero in this two by two matrix. And uh, you will also see uh, that I is equal to this matrix here. And this is exactly identical to the my 2 by 2 matrix that I call I, and which is really this 2 by 2 matrix, Euler's 2 by 2 matrix here, uh, the cos of 90 and the sine of 90. So in the split quaternions, you also have two uh, other 2 by 2 matrices, one that they call J and one that they call K. And the J matrix has the ones on the backward diagonal and they are the same sense. And the K is very similar to the I only. It is on the forward diagonal. And as you can see, uh, the entries have the opposite sense. You'll also notice over here, these are the rules of the split quaternions, and you'll notice that they are not the same as the rules for the quaternions. In the split quaternions, 1 times 1 equals 1, 1 squared equals 1, i squared equals minus 1, j squared equals 1, and k squared equals 1. So these are not the same rules as the quaternions because in the quaternions, j squared and k squared also equal to negative 1. So I'm going to go back to the color coding that I used in a previous video where I color coded the i's, j's, and k's for the quaternions. And then we're going to dig deeper into how to go from the split quaternions into the 4x4 four four matrix form of the quaternion. So here you can see um, I'm using the black and red for, uh, for 1 and I, and I'm using blue and green for J and K, similar to what I did before. So here you will see 1 has 1's in the forward diagonal and zeros in the backward diagonal and I has zeros in the forward diagonal and ones in the backward diagonal, opposite sense. J has zeros in the forward diagonal and ones in the backward diagonal, same sense. And K has zeros in the backward diagonal, ones in the forward diagonal, opposite sense. So as you can see, one and I could easily fit into the same matrix, and J and K could easily fit into the same matrix. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 1 and I, which gives us uh, this matrix here, and we're going to add J and K, which gives us this matrix here. So now we have two entities with non-zero entries in both the forward and diagonal, one is black and red, and the other is blue and green. 
So here, what we're going to do, we actually need a third entity in order to create the quaternions. So we only need one of these. So we need the one plus I, but we, and we need the J plus K, but we also need the minus J plus K, which is really taking all the positives and making them negative and taking the negative and making it positive. So we need these three entities in order to um, piece together a quaternion, the four by four matrix version of the quaternion. So here are the three entities that I showed you on the previous page. Okay, this entity, which I call one plus I, goes here and here in the four by four matrix. Then you take J plus K and you put it here, and you take minus J plus K, and you put it here. And when you do that, when you do this, you get a uh, perfectly good, uh, perfectly useful four by four matrix version of the quaternion. Okay, and so here are the rules of the quaternions. These are the rules of the complex numbers, and these are the rules of the quaternions. And you can see, you if you do the multiplication, you will see that um, this four by four matrix uh, does in fact reproduce this table here. And so uh, uh, one squared is equal to one, I squared is equal to minus one, J squared is equal to minus one, and K squared is equal to minus one. Here is the algebraic representation of the four by four matrix. So you can see that the AB matrix goes here and here, and that the CD matrix goes here and here. Here is Euler's uh, quaternion, Euler's formula in quaternion format in four by four matrix format. This is the algebraic expression, cos of uh, theta, I sine theta, J sine theta, K sine theta. You can imagine that there's thetas in here. So this is where, so the cosine goes on the four diagonal, and this is I, this is, um, the green is J, and the blue is K. So this is um, the four by four matrix version of Euler's uh, quaternion, which we derived from the split quaternions. Okay, and if you put a scalar, if you multiply this uh, four by four matrix by a scalar, this is a transformation matrix. This uh, will allow you to transform points from one coordinate system to another coordinate system or from one place in 3D space to another place in 3D space. So it's a little more complicated than that with quaternions, um, but the point of this exercise was to go from split quaternions to actual quaternions. Okay, so we got from split quaternions with these four matrices um, separated out and with slightly different rules, and to the quaternions, uh, the full-blown quaternions that have the proper quaternion rules, but the split matrix, um, sorry, the split quaternion two by two matrices are embedded into the four by four matrix. And so that's how you build up, um, that's how you build up quaternions from complex numbers. Okay, so this is a complex number. This is a complex number. This is not a complex number. So J and K are not complex numbers because they don't satisfy the complex number rules, but they are sort of a hybrid in between kind of a, a mathematical object to get us from uh, the split quaternions to the full-blown quaternions. And of course, um, the Euler's formula, this is uh, base, extremely useful in terms of being able to rotate points in a three-dimensional coordinate system. And I've done other videos about that, so I won't go over that. And so um, that is all I'm gonna do for today. 
Uh, I want to thank Mike Goldman for uh, making me pay attention to split quaternions because this is clearly the best way to get from complex numbers or from two-dimensional matrices to the full-blown uh, quaternion 4x4 four four matrix. So I hope you aren't getting too bored with all these videos on complex numbers and quaternions. I can't overstate how important this is. And the more ways I think I speak about it, the more ways I show it, the more different angles I take on it, I think the better you're going to understand it. And it's my opinion that this is super, super important. If you want to do, say, high-end robotics, it's a good idea to understand this. If you want to do high-end physics, uh, my approach to complex numbers and quaternions may in fact give you insights that you didn't have before. It certainly has done that for me. And so... Um, so I'm going to leave this video, um, I'm going to leave it at that. I have about, I don't know, a thousand videos in mind that I want to do. I'm super busy, but um, I don't always have time to make videos. And so hopefully I can get around to make more videos. Maybe I'll make a bunch of shorter videos. Hopefully I just have so many ideas I want to make videos on and not a lot of time. So I appreciate your patience and um, I for sure will be back with more videos on complex numbers and fractals and the principle of incommensurability and uh, everything in between. So have a good evening.